So good afternoon and uh, welcome to the first in a series of webinars uh, here and the title of the subject title being COVID-19, what it means to you, to Curcia uh, and to our customers. First of all, um, a quick introduction. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see that the top of your presenter's head has been removed. Um, my name is Andrew Cedric. I'm the Strategic Marketing Director for Curcia. Uh, I'm here to host the first uh, of these webinars. Um, the purpose of these webinars is to increase the internal awareness of our key issues uh, for us and for our customers, uh, to, to train and increase knowledge and understanding of applications, programs uh, and markets. And we're doing that through a process of webinars starting today, which will be recorded and made available for all uh, and, and distributed. Um, our payoff, we will have better trained teams, more satisfied customers and a cursor that is best placed to support our customers at this difficult time and to hit the ground running when things return to normal. So there are a few house rules. Uh, please switch off your mobile. We need you to concentrate. Uh, please mute your microphone. Um, we will have time for questions later. Uh, and please note down any questions during the presentation or send them through uh, on the on the, uh, the ticker. Uh, we will have a QA session at the end of the webinar uh, to, for, for you to follow through. OK, so. First of all, uh, the agenda. Uh, we will have a, a quick safety moment. Uh, then we will cover what COVID-19 is, how is COVID-19 transmitted, uh, how can I see, keep my, and also how can you keep yourself informed? External sources to, to help you keep up to date with the uh, current situation globally uh, and also locally. And then we want to show how Curcia is responding to COVID-19, both in protecting our customers from farm to fault biosecurity, you know, what are we doing now and how we are an essential part of our customers planning in this process, uh, protecting our people whilst ensuring business continuity. What steps are we taking to ensure our people stay safe, our production facilities stay operational and our customers are able to continue their business? And then Curcio product recommendations uh, and solutions. And finally, as I say, we'll have your questions, a Q&A session to clarify any points discussed during uh, the presentation. So to the safety moment, and it's a very, very simple safety moment. Um, the hashtag in the middle of this page, stay home, be safe. One of the best things that we can do at the moment to help to prevent the spread of coro uh, coronavirus is by keeping ourselves dis socially distanced staying at home, being safe with our loved ones and making sure that we are not putting ourselves or anybody else into uh, potential danger. OK, so moving on to the presentation. COVID-19 coronavirus disease 2019. So this is a um, uh, the, the COVID-19 is a virus. It's been named uh, as, as COVID-19 after the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It is a specific virus. Uh, coronaviruses are a group of related viruses that cause diseases in mammals and birds. Uh, and in humans, coronaviruses normally cause uh, respiratory tract infections that can be mild, such as some cases of the common cold and others which can be lethal, such as SARS or MERS, or in this instance, COVID-19. One key characteristic of the COVID-19 outbreak is the rapid exponential growth within communities. Although the rate of growth may differ from country to country based on local mitigating actions, the fact that individuals who may carry the virus show no or limited symptoms and that those individuals who do have symptoms may be infectious for many days before the symptoms show will have an impact on the rate of growth. It is for this reason that social distancing is essential and that most countries have taken measures to reduce non-essential traveling. So 
So coronaviruses are specific significant pathogens for humans and for animals. There are yet to be any vaccines or antiviral drugs developed to prevent or to treat human coronavirus infections. They are envelope viruses. The name coronavirus is derived from the Latin corona, meaning crown or halo, which refers to the characteristic appearance reminiscent of a crown or a solar corona around the virus. Within Curcia, we have taken steps to ensure that we are ahead of the curve and are regularly updating our understanding through the dedicated COVID-19 crisis cell. More details of this we will provide later. It is important at this time that we take expert advice and we are using a variety of official and academic sources to ensure that the information we provide to you and therefore to our customers is thoroughly checked. On this and on the next slide, we focus on the key points. So firstly, what about wearing masks? Well, unless you have symptoms, wearing a surgical mask has very little impact. You cannot wear it permanently, and in principle, principle you should be changing it regularly. Masks would be recommended, however, if you are in close and prolonged contact with patients. So if you have somebody in your um, within your household uh, who is uh, suffering from the uh, from the symptoms, you, it, we may suggest that you might want to wear a mask in that instance. And then one of the other th key things about this virus is that it does persist in the environment. Viruses, all viruses can persist for hours or even days, not necessarily growing, they just exist. So therefore, um, all cleaning and disinfection applications will greatly contribute to mitigating the risk. So we choose products wisely, as it is more the frequency and the thoroughness of cleaning and disinfection that will reduce the risks. On to the second slide, focusing on the, um, the key points. One thing to note, we have our own, within the COVID-19 crisis cell, expert doctor, who has been providing excellent support to Curcia to, to cover all these infection related issues. Here are three commonly asked questions relating to exposure and confinement. So for example, we have been confined for more than five days. I haven't reported any symptoms. Can I be sure that I don't have the virus? Well, in principle, no, you cannot for the reasons shown. The safe period is between 12 and 14 days, and this is, a, this is not just a precaution, this is a necessary confinement period. Secondly, if I was exposed to the virus and have not been sick, could I get the disease if my immune system has changed? At this point, this is unknown. At this point, we do not have enough information uh, to be able to comment on this. It may happen, and it has happened in the past, you may have heard of comments such as herd immunity. That does happen, but this is something that we are not aware of with the coronavirus at this point. And finally on here, although I may take, I will take steps not to contaminate anyone, others will remain possible sources. Is that why we have to main, remain con confined as long as the peak period has not been reached? The answer to that question, of course, is yes. And the main focus for this is so that we do not end up overloading me medical services. If, as I mentioned previously, the exponential rate at which this is growing means that the medical services and when as and when the, uh, the disease takes off become inundated with many, many people. As a result of that, not only does the, the, are the number of people suffering from COVID-19 significant, but also any other issues, any other um, uh, significant illnesses will go and could go untreated. So how is COVID-19 illness transmitted from person to person? Well, firstly, the infection is always via the respiratory system. And the common symptoms are fever, tiredness and a dry cough while severe cases show very high fever, pneumonia, and difficulty in breathing. Now, 
Within this, the symptoms may take between one to 12 days, uh, dependent clearly on the, uh, the, the uh, amount of the, the degree of infection, but also the physical condition of the person who is suffering. Transmission is either through close contact with an infected person, through that infected person coughing or sneezing, or by touching contaminated surfaces or objects and then touching your mouth, your nose or your eyes. So practice social distancing and take precautions when touching surfaces outside of your home, which are commonly, commonly used. For example, things like shopping cart handles. One thing that uh, I have noticed recently um, when I have been out on the occasions I've been out to be able to go and do some shopping is that none of the um, none of the shops around uh, this area are now taking uh, a currency. They will only ask for payment by card and that card is only by contactless at this point. So that is uh, clearly showing that there are uh, measures in place to prevent the the excess use of, of um, touching surfaces which, which, which are commonly uh, used. So here to, to emphasize uh, the tenacity of this virus and the ability that it has to remain active on hard surfaces for relatively long periods of time, we show you this, this uh, uh, table, these tables here, these graphs here, which is from a study, a detailed study of the coronavirus uh, coronavirus 1, which was the original uh, SARS virus, and coronavirus 2, which is the COVID-19. Now, if you look closely at some of these, you will notice that both of them, both of them have very sort of similar um, uh, uh, decay curves. However, you would also notice that COVID-19 is more substantive even than the SARS virus was to begin with. So we do have a very viable very uh, aggressive um, viral potential viral contamination. So if left on surfaces, as it says here, viruses can be de detected for anything up to 72 hours. 72 hours on plastic surfaces. How many plastic surfaces are there uh, in your home, in our lives these days? Even plastic packaging on food, for example. So therefore, it's essential to carry out regular and thorough cleaning of surfaces. So what do we expect of you? Well, one thing we'd like you to do is to keep yourselves informed uh, and trained. The situation, as it says here, is evolving every day and we you need to keep your eyes on official sources. This slide shows a variety of different sources which we are using and also which other professional bodies and NGOs are using to track uh, the progress in terms of uh, the progress of the infection, but also uh, of methods uh, used to contain uh, and control the virus. You will have access to this deck, as I said earlier afterwards, and so you'll be able to access them directly from this slide. So for example, by clicking here on the map directly, we can go to the um, we can go to the site here, which shows the map of the current outbreak situation. Okay. We can also, if we click on the World Health, any of these icons around the side of the um, uh, the side of the, the map, we can click on to the, each one of these and bring up detail from any of the specific sites covering the coronavirus. This one here, the World Health Organization, is probably the most thorough. And also, if you have anything specific within your local region, it is useful to click onto this one anyway, as you will be able to get uh, country and technical guidance, as in indicated here. So what can we do to prevent the spread of coronavirus? Well, firstly, prepare. Clean surfaces frequently and thoroughly and practice and promote good hand washing practice. Seven steps followed by hand disinfection. 
And then, of course, we can act. We can avoid contact with people who have flu like symptoms. We can avoid touching. I know it's very difficult to try. Avoid touching your eyes, your nose or your mouth. Avoid sharing cups or plates or other personal items. And then disinfect all frequency, all frequently touched surfaces. Most importantly, if you do start to experience symptoms, keep distant from people and seek medical advice. Do not self medicate. So how can this Curtia help? Well, as the only pure player in food safety all along the food chain, we play a significant role in the control and spread of COVID-19 from farm to fork. From the provision of hand soap and hand disinfectants, as well as methods and communication tools to ensure compliance with hand cleaning protocols. And here is just one uh, example of product offering and uh, professional uh, uh, details uh, that we can provide based around the efficacy of our products. As I say, we are accompanying our customer all along the food chain. And in order to pre help preserve the, and protect the health of these workers, it's essential that we have proper hand washing at all, at all stages. And of course, our company is fully committed to protecting our employees and to continue our activities. The communication here from Sebastian Bossard outlines the steps that we're taking to respond to this crisis, including the fact that we are ensuring the well-being of all people in our company, that we are ensuring the continuity of our activities so that our customers can still deliver the, deliver the essential services that are required. We're responding to many questions and many requests that we receive from our stakeholders, both internal and external. And as you can see from this slide on the news page, we have updates on a regular basis uh, directly for external use. Now, our main priority is taking care of people. We pay special attention to our most vulnerable employees. All business trips have been cancelled and are replaced by online meeting solutions such as this. Any visit by people that are not routinely in our premises is, is uh, postponed until further notice. And all employees with signs of inspection or symptoms are requested to promptly and immediately inform the relative human resources department and to seek medical advice. In addition, administrative staff sales teams should be working teleworking as much as is possible. An exception for sales would be possible emergencies on food safety and farm safety grounds. And most importantly, no shaking hands until further notice. Now, due to the rapid evolution of the coronavirus epidemic, we have created a dedicated team to monitor this crisis. Its role is to report daily on the situation. It is to communicate that um, to, as frequently as possible to all our stakeholders with the latest information guidelines, best practices and the decisions made within CARESIA. It is also to coordinate CARESIA's actions in this area. And as you can see, we cover a all areas of function within the operation, right the way through from administration and financial to supply chain, social operations, legal operations, IT uh, and also external consultants. 